Rolling. Power to the people! Mm. That breakfast right there, that bowl of rice krispies in my back. Abs <clears throat> still sore. Still sore. And steel. Alright, well, today it's been a rat race. Didn't go as planned. I, uh, my dog didn't want to wake up, and then he didn't want to get out of bed. I guess he was, uh, he was up last night for a bit. Um, we got to get the humidifier going. He was coughing a little bit. But, um, so then I finally get him out of bed and we go, and I'm trying to get him to go outside and go potty. And lo and behold, there's a... Pit bull I've never seen in my life outside the front door. Why? Right? So I carefully open the door, and then I notice a neighbor down the street. She's standing outside. She's like, yeah, it's been out. It's kind of friendly. I'm like, okay, good. So I go ahead and I walk on outside. Of course, I don't let my dog out. Because he's a little tiny dude. And the pit bull was friendly, but she... uh as you can see, clawed my my hands up a little bit as I was petting her. I walked her down. But the the woman said that she had a flat tire, the neighbor had a flat tire, and the guy next door to both of them had his motorcycle moved. And then I finally got down to the guy that owned the pit bull, and he saw me, or heard me whistling to get his dog to come down there. And he came out, and I was telling him what the woman down the street told me. He said someone had broken in his house yesterday, and that's why he was at home from work today. And that somebody had stolen his gun and stolen his... He has like a jar of fives and ones where he'd been saving up for Christmas. And somebody stole that. So, opened up the door to Mutual of Omaha. Meets... Uh, Crime Wave 2000 or something. Anyway, so I didn't have time to prepare. I normally like to do a little uh, quick reading. So... I guess we could... I just don't feel comfortable going over the Cabalion today. But am I going to do it anyway? I don't know. The Planes of Existence, that's one that I would need to, to reread. That's the whole as above, so below. The Aleister Crowley line, as above, so below. Um, the Sword, the band The Sword. Um, They got that. They got that one song, you know, that one. Uh, well, yeah, Vibrations, right? I like this one. Nothing rests, everything moves. Everything, right? The third hermetic principle, the principle of vibration, embodies the truth that motion is manifest in everything in the universe, that nothing is at rest, that everything moves, vibrates, and circles. The hermetic principle was recognized by some of the early Greek philosophers who embodied it in their systems. But then, for centuries, it was lost sight of by the thinkers outside the Hermetic ranks. But in the 19th century, physical science rediscovered the truth. And the 20th century scientific discoveries have added additional proof to the correctness and truth of the centuries-old Hermetic doctrine. Um, <clears throat> let's, let me show you something Let's go to YouTube. Uh, 
I don't know if the sound is coming through. The film you are about to see has no characters. If you spare a little of your imagination, it is a film to describe to you the effect of cymatic frequencies on matter. So anyway, I would play more, but I don't want to get a copyright strike over something like that. Um, so, uh, if you know anything about like some of the modern physicists like Michio Kaku, he wrote on string theory, and that the whole vibration is one of the key principles in the string theory and the multiple dimensions and all that and all the forces, right? So if it vibrates a certain frequency, you get gravity. If it vibrates another, you have uh, light. If it vibrates another frequency, you have solid matter, right? And we see that with <clears throat> cymatics and the way that's vibrating, and then you see it, it starts to construct geometry, right? And that goes back to the whole quadrivium, uh, how sound is number and time right but those vibrations in the sand it creates a geometrical structure which is number and space right so you have number and time creating number and space pretty cool stuff if you ask me and uh moreover you know if you think about it since we uh since we were attacked by the wildlife this morning. How animals can pick up. They, they, I don't know, right? Is there a real science behind it? Some would argue no. Where's your proof, right? But I would say you definitely do. I think, for instance, they say when Michael Jordan walks into a room, his presence is felt, right? Uh, Trump, whether you love him or hate him, you can't take your eyes off of him. That's how he got into office, right? He a magnetic personality. It's all so you know whenever he walks into the room, he's owning the room, so to speak. Um, any good deal maker, negotiator, right? Um, even somebody like Mike Tyson, um, who is for all his faults, he's pretty smart. Uh, I mean, if you, I would put him in the class of modern day philosophers. I mean, he's Mike Tyson is more well read than I would say eighteen out of we'll say nineteen. We'll say nineteen out of twenty, right? Eighteen out of twenty. I might as well do nine out of ten. Um, pundits you would see on TV news, right? I, just from what I can see, listening to him talk. He has a more realistic view of uh, what is uh, really going on, right? Um, and he talks about how he has control over himself now better than he used to. And But if you like listen to him talk and you see him talking about some of the older incidents that have happened, he... Dude, you can, like, just watching the video, it feels like you're in the room with him. I mean, he starts vibrating, and it's, you're paying attention to what he's saying, right? And if he starts getting emotional and crying, like, he brings you with him, right? So I think that all kind of goes back to this, the vibration principle. Um, and another thing I was thinking about is... I was looking at origami. I don't know why. Just was watching it. I think I watched a documentary on it. Um, there was one on Netflix a few years back. And it got me thinking, well, they, they say the universe is flat, right? That's one of the theories. The universe is actually flat. The universe is flat. So there you go, flat earthers. There's your uh, 
your proof, right? You have it written in the books. Space time is flat. It's all an illusion. But if you think about it in the the way that we make origami, right? You got the the 2D, the flat landers, as Carl Sagan talked about, and then you take that 2D, that flat sheet, and you fold it, and boom, you have a 3D object. Anyway, pretty cool, right? All right, so let's find a picture to paint. What do you think about that? Was not ready. Pulled that off pretty good. All right, that was worth talking about. Ten minutes of philosophizing. Let's go to picks. It's free picks. Free. Let's just search it. All right, so this website, um, you you have like Vecdeasy, which has a lot of free uh, vector stuff. This freepick.com. You have thousand and one free fonts.com. Like, there are a lot of resources out there free. You know, we talked about it a little bit before. Blender, the 3D program, free. And it's starting to compete with uh, like Maya and 3D Studio Max and Houdini and all that. I'm telling you, open source is the way. I mean, that's giving you the knowledge I have thus far, right? Open source. Like, what good is having wisdom if you're not sharing it with others, right? So that's the trivium in effect. Grammar, logic, rhetoric. Rhetoric is us cycling through what we've learned, applying our own lessons we've learned, um, and teaching others, letting others know. Learn from, learn from my mistakes, right? So let's find something old. Let's go to photos and let's go to free, right? So we don't have to worry about getting our pants suit off because I like wearing pants. So it's just a, just a bunch of old heads right now. We might need to get a little more specific, right? So we've done an old airplane. What might we want to paint today? How about ruins? Uh, this uh, building over here, this old abandoned building. That would be cool if it was up close and like a upshot of it. But it's not, so we're not going to paint it. Something with a nice little white source. Except art there. Temple of Diana. Hmm. You feeling it? Ooh, battleship. I don't know. After after rescuing the pit bull from itself, I don't know. The inner ship. A lot of detail. I think I'm gonna make it black and white again. All right. I'll try to do a finish out the week doing black and white or mon or two dichromatic <laughs> duo tone. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Is that the one we want? I just feel like there's something better out there. That could be cool, but I feel like it might. 
too muddy too quick at the small scale though. I see these faces here would be super dope. Just not enough light on them. Hmm. Could type in mushrooms. Want to paint a mushroom? Abandoned house. See that chair? That'd be pretty cool to paint. Starting to feel the mushrooms. Ooh, we could do this one. Blur my eyes. If you squint, like kind of like make your eyes all blurry. Right? You look weird on camera, but foils, it'll like simplify the picture down to basic shapes. Hmm. Liking that one. Aged building under the sunlight. It just needed just a touch more value. I don't know. The old truck in the tree. By the way, I'm not typing in black and white photography. This is the winner here. We might revisit this one. Open image and new tab. Uh -huh. Let's print that mamma jamma. And we're off. Leaves us with 40 minutes to paint this thing. No, I love a challenge. Cameraman, switch to scene two, please. Thank you. So we're going to raise our vibrations today into a creative state. All right, this one's going to be portrait. So we've got to turn our paper. There's going to be some editing on this one, meaning I'm going to edit it. How about today, do a little bit of an underdrawing? Go with. I'm going to go with crimson. Do we go with a brown? Sienna Brown. All right. So we got pretty strong straight line. You know what I might do? Bear with me. Bear with me. Don't go anywhere. Save image. Open up OBS. Image. All right.
stick it on here. Boom, 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 bing, bing, bing. All right, so the shape above the light shape up top, it's basically a square. Then we got a, we have an arc. Is it arch? It's an arc. It's an arc of the circle. Because an arch is a McDonald's. I had a McRib last Friday. Just thought I'd share that with you. Another guy over here. Lower. Just remember, right? This stuff isn't. I'm not trying to be perfect right now. I could be a lot more precise if I wanted to be. Trust me. Sound like a threat. Don't make me show you how detailed I can. How precise. Um, one of the things that the more you draw, like the older I've gotten... I, I get better at, you know, how this is, like, closer, and it gets wider, wider, wider. The diminution as objects recede and get smaller. I've gotten a lot better at doing that by eyeball. Because, yeah. I mean, the way to do it is you would just go up, right? Create. Uh, no, you would. No. All right, so you go that so the perspective is the resin lines like right here right so this even though it's an arc go out here I do like an angle like that and if you want to divide this you like make your first square and then you Divide that in half. This corner goes through the middle to here. Right? Boom. This one goes through the middle to here. Boom. See how it's getting smaller? Anyway. Over time you learn how to do that by eyeball. And if once you do it by eyeball, you take a step back or come back to it, right? Work on another part of the drawing. You don't have to work on the same area over and over and over. It's actually good to bounce around because you don't have a, like a true vision of it. That's that's one of the reasons why you do the mirror trick. It's so you can see your own art. It's hard to see your own art. Anyway, draw it. Come back to it. If if you think it it might look off, kind of. I can't decide. It's off. Trust me. If you think it might look off. It's off because you're constructing it based on what you want it to look like, right? Like you're you're channeling in from the ether. You're pulling it from your imagination, right? And if you're like, ah, uh, remember, this is like the grossest form of it, right? You're never gonna get that perfection, but you can get close, right? That's where the drawing for years and years and years comes in. You eventually, you get to where you lose less and less in translation, right? So you hear it through the grapevine. It's the telephone game with the universe. And then the goal is to acquire enough skills and tricks and style, right, which is everything you do wrong, acquire enough of that to where it looks cool. Like whatever is off, sometimes you can guide it, right? You want it off in a certain spot on purpose to make it 
say, unsettling or something. And so we have a hot spot here, kind of a hot spot here. I got to get this little bit of background texture. All right, this is all in the book by Nathan Folks. Nathan Falks, this guy Falks. Either get that or you don't. Downloaded the new Halo yesterday. Cost me about an hour of drawing time, right? For shame. I drew over the week. Okay, a little leisure. If you vibrate all the time, you'll overheat. You don't need to overheat. You need to be calm so you can wrangle pit bulls without getting your face chewed off. So anyway, I gotta figure out whether or not I'm gonna set up a webcam. Catch these tire flattening motorcycle moving crooks. And uh, Oh yeah, I have it up on screen. Dark spot. Okay. My super secret magical juice is getting low. I'll give you the recipe for this later. Ooh, that's sweat. Start out. Miss the big brush. paper towel yeah we got to get the humidifier going tonight wake up like uh, spongebob when he went to visit sandy the squirrel got all dried out all right this so this is a warm light mm. Let's do just some straight up orange on it. It's heavy. Is that the right color? Mm -hmm. Let's go with some. Yellow go. Trying to preserve the white spots there. Although once I get more So get more stuff on it. It'll look lighter, right? We just have con. We don't have any context for how light or dark that's going to be. But I do know I need to at least try to preserve. Hmm. 
All right, so the rest of the painting will be just black and brown. Yeah, I used three, four colors, but it's really, really one. Like how it's got some natural, was that fluting? Is that what that's called? Fluting? Oh, oh, easy fella. One thousand eight hundred and seventy five watts. Wasn't so bad, was it? whole lot of not painting going on right All right, so we got some fluting. There's a lot of verticals on this. So I'll let the brush do some brushy stuff with this. Fine. I'll use a smaller brush. All right, so what's the purpose of this again? What's this live for? We're just trying to get good at working the paint, learn how to control the value. There's just some noise in here, some sort of bah, 
relief. It's art term for you. Fancy. Fancy art term. Do that and then knock out, knock out the top of the columns. Can you name all the Column toppers and bottoms. Dorian, Dorian, Ionian. Corinth. I don't know. I don't know. Murray State for you. Guess what? It's going to bug me not knowing. Let's look it up. Ionic, Corinthian, Doric, Tuscan, and Composite. And this is a Corinthian style top. Highly decorative. All right, so. Start. Messing with these shapes in here. Okay, so this shape here isn't necessarily in. Let me go back so I can make sure I'm. Yeah. It isn't necessarily there. So this is where I'm editing it and kind of faking it, but it still looks kind of right, right? I don't know if that's my experience coming into play or not. I, I don't feel like it is. I feel like. It's part of trusting and letting the watercolor do some of the work for you. Right? Scratch the back of my leg, not my butt. Bit of a tree back there. All right. So let's hit this with a blow dryer again. And then I'm going to do another value pass, like overall, because it's still like quite it's too light. Here we go. I told you. Once we got more on, that it's going to start looking lighter here. 
Not gonna lie to you. Hoorah. This is still dramatically darker than what I have. Bust down on that column. Between. Mm -hmm. It went too far on that. For water. I almost think I heard somebody knock at the door. That pit bull. Let me in. Kind of lost the detail in there on that. I should have been a little more precise. So maybe next time I'll uh, make it a thing. Just to show you how precise I can be. Alright, because I still feel like we're in the territory of... Well, I can do that. That's good. I want you thinking like that. That's the mindset we want. Right? Because we're just uh, painting together. But also, I kind of need to... See if I can't show off a little bit to appease people that might be looking for something more and they're not getting the point that we're just hanging out painting, which is just, you know, there's a level of analysis that goes into it. Like you have to analyze what you're doing. I mean, you can't just paint blindly and get better, right? Like, I, my purpose here is value, right? I've stated that. Also, for my own psyche, I kind of want to really do a high-powered painting. He did not just draw a straight line. His arm all dangling out there like that. Yep, I did. That's some years of practice. You learn, like, if I don't feel comfortable doing it, like, early in the morning, I'm all, like, herky-jerky, you know? It's, uh... 
I'm shaky. Like, you know, sometimes I'll have to hold my hand. Because I might not have stretched enough. All right. All right. We're going to hit it with the dryer again. Then we're going to give it a fourth pass. Today, actually, it's looking a little bit lighter on screen than it is in real life. Just a little bit. I think I'm going to sneak in some orange here. Hmm. Went wobbly on that one. Oh, well. It's about the tone. Uh, how accurate we can be with the architecture. Let's let this go around. going for it. Some ledges in here that just aren't translating very well. The bottom of the columns. I'm going to be a bit more talkative tomorrow. Got to have that mindset, right? Why not start today? So I'm going to talk more. Busy figuring right now. Too much figuring. Not enough entertaining. The bulldog got me shook. All right. I think part of it is my paper over here that I was that I'm trying to go off of is a little washed out compared to the what I'm looking at on screen. I got better paper, you know what? I'll start I'll load in some better paper. 
Look at this guy making excuses. That's rich. I didn't know. Right? That's what my daughter used to say all the time. I didn't know. Oh, ten minutes. This week, sixty minutes. I remember my teacher playing in a uh, was economics class. Mr. Parker, Mr. Parker, if you're watching, I'm sorry for what I did to you. I truly, truly am. But, uh, he played this episode of 60 Minutes and it was showing. It had a baby in a jar that was a cyclops. Because it was run off from like Chernobyl or something. Yeah. Good times. Anyway, it was freaky. I still think about it to this day, obviously. So... I lied, I ended up making another colored drawing. So, let's get some of this fancy stuff. Mirrors, right? So you draw, draw here, then you draw here, then you come here. Just kind of repeat those shapes over and over. Same thing over here. Right, this one. Looks like a Dorian mode one, I think. Ionic. I was drawing one that looked kind of ionic. Need more stuff on it. Glow it up, as the youngsters say. I apologize if you could hear me swallowing. Right. You know, one more pass would get it. It's like total. Here's what's crazy. Here's where we're, here's letting you know we might be in a simulation. I'm painting, looking at the screen. <laughs> Instead of looking at my hand in real life, I'm like seeing how it's translating over here, right? Because the real life is not as important as what you are seeing on your screen. Just get out of my head. Need you people out of my head. Stop controlling me. It's all an act. Not really crazy.
No, no, no for real. Yeah, I'm not, not really crazy. And let's get that. Let's get it under here. All right. I think to soften it, we might do a final round and just bloom it a little bit. Because I'm addicted to the bloomers. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Them bloomers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go with the bigger brush again. All right, that's all she wrote. Tomorrow, I am going to talk your faces off. Unless that rascally bulldog comes back. Ooh. Eddie, like that right there. Like it's giving it almost like a film grain down here. Looking at that on the screen compared to the photo, pretty close, right? Right? People? Anybody there? All right. That's all for this episode of Reclaiming the Archetypes. We'll see you tomorrow.